Hello, everyone. Uh, this is the workshop about historical databability in EVM chains. And I come from the Rotkey team. So who, uh, who are we? We are Bantech, a uh, young developer, data master, Ooh. <laughs> trolling manager. Uh, oh, oops, it was not here. OK, so who are we? Uh, we are the Rotkey team. Uh, we develop a portfolio tracker, an accounting tool. It's an open source project. And this is the team that's here is in Berlin. And there are two people that couldn't make it here. So the workshop was prepared by me. I'm Javier Garcia. Uh, Kesos is here also from the team that he's doing technical things on the workshop. And uh, Lucky was making the presentation look beautiful. And uh, Lefter is checking that everything made sense. OK. Um, OK, so what we will discuss today. Uh, there are two main questions that we want to ask in this talk. Um, we will see what they are. What is the current state uh, on the ecosystem? Like how we do this, uh, answer this question at the moment. Um, the current solution that we have to work around this and um, how we can improve. So what is the question that we are trying to answer today? So, uh, okay, so we have, whenever you go to a, your wallet, you see something like this is, this is MetaMask. So there is mouse. Yeah. So you have your address here. Then there is one number here. That is the amount of tokens that you have in your uh, address in your wallet. And then there is something like this below. That is the last interaction interactions you did in the blockchain. In this case, this is a Gnosis uh, address. So it has XDAI. That is the native token in Gnosis. In Ethereum, it will be F. And those are transactions that happen in in Gnosis. Gnosis is also, for those who don't know, is a EVM chain, is a fork of Ethereum kind of, and there are many others, right? So this is one thing that everyone sees every day, and this is something more complex. The, this is a screenshot from Rocky, the app that we are developing. So in this case, I have uh, Optimist transa Transactions. Uh, Optimist is a layer two chain, also EVM compatible, Kind of. um, so here uh, you have a representation of different transactions in a human readable format. Uh, in this case, it's a, um, a spending approval on Optimist. Then you have a transfer, a swap in, of Ethereum for DAI, and then an appro another approval of DAI. Uh, it's important to note here that this is in, I have information about the assets that were transacted in those events, like it's spending the Ethereum and the DAI. But also I have the action that I made. This is the approval thing. Um, you have information in, about the transaction in human readable format. This is something that is not available in the um, EVM chain by default. Like, for example, it says receive this amount of ETH, send this amount of ETH, and set the approval, right? So this is some kind of translation that we do on top of the data that is provided from the block itself. So these are the two questions that we want to ask where, when we use a uh, EVM chain. What are my balances or what I did in the blockchain? So now if you want to see, uh, obtain this information, what you need to do is uh, query uh, Ethereum nodes, EVM nodes in general. So there is a spec for this. This is the JSON-RPC API on the nodes. Uh, one problem with this spec is that not, is not, not all the nodes implemented correctly. There might be things lacking in one client or not, because there are, for those who don't know, you have your node that is capable of contacting the network, the blockchain, but uh, you need a, a client. That client is the implementation of this node. The, let's say like the person talking with the blockchain. And it can translate some uh, languages and it can not do certain things. So for example, for knowing your balances, there is this method in the specification, it's called get balance, and it takes two arguments. The first one is the address that you want to query, the balance for, and uh, the moment that you want to query it for. Let's say in the last block, what is my F balance? One problem with this uh, request is that um, you can only ask for the native token of the chain. In Ethereum, it will be F. In the X in Gnosis chain, it will be XDAI. Uh, if you want to ask a node for your DAI balance, for example, or your, your USDC balance, it's not possible to do it like this. You need other mechanisms to ask for this balance. Um, 
Then for transactions, that is the other question that we are working with, there is this get transaction by hash. So whenever you have a transaction uh, hash, you can query the information related to uh, what happened in that event. So um, uh, the, the RPC provides information about uh, when it happened in block number, what was the as, uh, address sending the transaction, what was the target of the transaction, gas price, and then this is general information about the transaction, but there is other information that allows to, you to build something like this in human readable format. Those are the logs. Logs are emitted by contracts. So whenever you make an action, the developer uh, like added a label in every action that says, okay, this address is performing this action. And this is me like meta information that is added for every transaction that happens on the blockchain. And it's stored also in your notes, so you can always query it. So th those are the two ways currently that you can access information in your node for balances and transactions. Okay, uh, so let then comes another question that uh, there are di di different types of nodes. You have full nodes, prune nodes, and archive nodes. And uh, let's see. So full nodes, um, they are the a standard kind of nodes, let's say, uh, they can answer this question that I presented to you, like give me the native token balance for this address. They can return transactions and they can return the receipts of the transaction. Uh, problem with this kind of nodes is that they grow in size very, in size very fast and it depends on the block size uh, of the chain and different properties of the chain. So for example, the Go Ethereum implementation, the other client, let's say, um, is for 14 terabytes of uh, data that is stored in your disk. So if you want to host your own node, you need 14 terabytes to have it. And it grows over time, it's never stopping. So this is the first type of node. Then we have prune nodes that they come as, as well as, I don't have 14 terabytes, what I can do? Uh, you can, um, prune your node, so you have your history, and you say, okay, I want to keep the last, let's say, 1,000 blocks. So whenever there is a block over the 1,000 limit, I just prune the state, and I can query what I have, but what I prune is lost forever. You don't have access to it. And then there are archive nodes. Those are the most powerful nodes that you can have. And they have the property, they are like full nodes, but they also keep the state of the chain. So for example, uh, they can answer not only what is my F balance, but what is my F balance at this block. So there is a, they can keep a state around the whole blockchain. And you can query transaction for them since origin, they don't lose anything, and they, they can uh, reproduce the state of the chain at a certain time. Uh, for those, uh, guess is not really feasible to run this at a um, archive node. So there are implementations like Erigon that is doing uh, archive node in 2.2 terabytes as it is now, and Rev that is the most recent one, um, built in Rust by Pragma, the Paradigm team. Um, yeah, it's in, still in beta release. Don't use, don't use it for production, but it's providing similar results to Oregon. So, okay, so we have this kind of nodes, and then come the question, how do I query my data, right? Because I saw that you can query your balances, you can query your transaction, but there are so many things that I need to know, and it's difficult to query them. So, indexers come as a solution to this topic. Uh, the most basic indexer that everyone has interacted probably in this uh, room is Etherscan, and there are other explorers. But what, what they do is, when you click in, in your address, you get all the transactions that you, you did. This is because Etherscan behind the scene is using a node as in, and is doing a additional indexing on the addresses for this, uh, uh, yeah, for the address that you request. And this is not only done by Etherscan, but other explorer, Blockout, um, others. Uh, then there is the graph uh, that they are based on events. And there is TrueBlock that I will also speak more in deep later. So the problem with the graph, uh, I, I assume that everyone knows Etherscan more or less has interacted at some point with it. So let's talk with uh, the graph. Um, one problem with indexing things in the graph is that it's based on events. 
Uh, so you don't really go to the chain and can say at any point, okay, I have my thing for Uniswap, I know them, but I also want to ask Balancer. So you have to, if you want to add an additional thing to query, you have to res rescan all the chain. Uh, an additional problem is that, and it's an issue that we have in our app, because at some point we rely it in the graph, and uh, it breaks, because there is a kind of event that the author of the indexer didn't expect, and it's not built properly to handle it, and it just simply breaks. Uh, so it needs maintenance for the, from the developer side, and also uh, the graph, they have their hosted service, but now it's also um, a pay-as-you query or pay-as-you-go service. And this is a burden, in, for example, in decentralized apps, like all uh, local apps, sorry, uh, because um, you have to make your user you add more, use, more, more complexity to your user. He has to have a key for the payments and everything. Uh, the problem with Etherscan that I have mentioned before is also that the, um, it's a Web2 service and you have rate limits. It's not something that you can query. It's not relaying on your node. It's connected to their own service. It's their own node. Your node is useless for that. And um, what I said, your rate limit, you have uh, quotas. It's not really. If you want to do big analysis on blockchain, it's not really useful. Um, there is true blocks also. Uh, that is the solution that we at the team like the most because it's a general purpose indexer. Uh, it allows you to query any address, that all the appearances of this address, and it's even better than uh, Etherscan because Etherscan, when you want to find um, a transaction that belongs to your address, what it does is looking at that properties that I mentioned before in the node is the from, the to, and if they haven't emitted uh, your address, they look at it. But TrueBloss goes beyond and analyzes the whole data that the node provides to find things that could be addresses and also indexes them. Another property that from TrueBlocks is that it's easy to self-host. In, con in contrast with uh, the graph, the graph has a lot of things that you have to wake up as a services. Uh, it's a slow indexing. You need to write your own indexer for that. So in TrueBlocks, it's really easy to host. It's just downloading an executable, sync it, and you are ready to go. It's also lightweight. You can have it like every time there is a new block listening, analyzing it, and it's very lightweight in your computer. You can run, I run it in this laptop for the workshop. And it reduces site requirements, and this is because you don't need to index all the blockchain. You only need to index whatever you are going to use. So for example, my address is small, has a few transactions. It doesn't take much space of my digs. If you, want, if you are Uniswap, you're a big player on the field, you have a lot of transactions. Okay, you take the burden of indexing more transactions. But it's, um, not everyone has the same complexity in terms of uh, size requirements. Okay, so we are going now with code. Uh, there is a QR code if someone wants to follow around. Uh, we have a small project. I, I prepared this like for everyone to take the computer out or, and start coding if they want. Uh, if not, I will just go with mine. Uh, we will see some examples on how to um, how to interact with the different indexers and how to query information from from the node. Um, the, this is the QR code and the URL below. Um, okay. Doesn't work? Sorry? Ah, okay. So you can go uh, to GitHub. Let me put it. Ah. I pull it bigger so you can see. Okay. Um, Mm. Sorry, let's see how I can make this big. Mm. No, there is nothing like this. Mm. Uh, no, uh, soon the page. Uh, 
Maybe now? Look, we had the worst idea. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this is just a small repository. It has a readme with examples that we will follow. Uh, it uh, has Python code to call the node directly. And um, I prepare because not everyone is Python prone or whatever. So um, uh, it has a Docker file that you can also execute. You don't need to have the environment ready or anything. Um, yeah, uh, also one thing to mention is that uh, I have made the code, so using the Rodkey library. I mean, we have Rodkey that is an application, but the same code that we use for the application, I have used it for the um, workshop. Um, the thing is that um, it can be worth used as a library or so whatever. Okay, so the first thing is that we will be querying directly the node. So I will be using the RPC uh, interface for the um, different nodes. Okay. How I increase the size on the <laughs> this thing? Uh, let me see. Okay. Uh, this is doing, but the, this is why I hate Linux sometimes. Like this 100% is not changing. Okay. So this thing first is just a um, request. I'm saying, okay, I'm going to send some JSON to uh, to this RPC node. Is the Llama RPC. Uh, one thing about those is that um, Llama RPC is like a node. I don't have a node running in my laptop because I don't have the capabilities to do that. So I rely in an external service, an external provider for this node. In this case, uh, Llama RPC provides me with archive nodes. Uh, but the thing of relying on external nodes is that, for example, this one in particular uses, has both uh, full nodes and archive nodes. So the, the, this is a balancer on top of all the nodes they have, and sometimes you get root to a full node or an archive node. So this is another issue of not hosting your own node. Uh, I talk with them, with, as a team we talk with them, um, they kind of fix it, so whenever it fails, it retries again with an archive node. But yeah, so what this, this is doing is sending a post request, it's using the get balance of the, um, RPC method, or the, this is sending my address and is requesting the balance in the last block. So if I send this, I got just a, just, I got just get a result that is the balance that I have in my node. So this answer one of the questions that we were talking about. And you can do this example also with your addresses. This is in X format. And this is the other thing. Uh, asking for a transaction. Uh, okay, so it's doing the get transaction by hash that we mentioned before. I'm just passing the transaction and it gives me all this information. I will actually, in a second, wipe it. Um, why are you complaining? I did something wrong. Um, yeah, do this. Mm. Okay, so this is better, I believe. So this has the what I was mentioning before, the block has, the block where it was produced, the block number. Uh, I don't know. Okay, so the gas price for the block, uh, the input that the user provided for this block, um, in this case, uh, yeah, the properties for the point in the elliptic curve. And um, with this, you can recreate the state of, as I saw before. So this is the response. And this is for querying the logs. That is what provides the other thing that I show in Rodkey. That is the human readable format. From this, you can extract it. Is this thing here, uh, logs. And you have the address that emitted uh, the log, uh, the topics. Uh, information about the block and the index, the position inside the transaction. Okay, so this is the raw querying a node. And now we will go and use indexer. So I will go here. No. Workshops. Okay. Um, so I prepare. Um, 
you can run it as I say. You see, it requires Python 3.10 is the only bad thing, but uh, you can create the environment. Uh, I don't know how to increase the font size in the browser for real. No, it's not working. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, Ah, uh, here. Okay. Okay. So just create the virtual environment, activate it, and do pip install to install the dependency that it has. Or you can use Docker, uh, build a container, it will download Python and install the requirements, and you can do execute any of the example screen, uh, scripts. If you want to do it later, you can also do since everything is here. So. Okay, so I have the first one that is calling Etherscan. Uh, as I said, is using the um, code from Rotkey. So this file here, Rotkey.com, has configuration that you need to use the data beforehand. And it's creating an Etherscan instance. What it's doing is just, it just provides uh, abstraction on top, on top of the API for Etherscan. Uh, um, yeah, and it's initializing some classes that Rotkey uses for fast queries. And what I do is just count the module, account module from Etherscan that allowed me to make a list the transactions. And I sort here for uh, ascending order on timestamp for this address and starting on this block. So what I'm doing basically is using the power of an indexer on top of the node and is querying range of transactions for my addresses. This is the thing that we can do with nodes at the moment. So if I execute this, uh, no, um, yeah. okay. no. Yeah, so it will just make a query to Etherscan, download the response from it, process it, and this is the information for the um, transaction that they wanted to query. The so it's basically the same information. They have made it, so it's the same information as you will get from a node, uh, kind of a structure, it's a common structure, but uh, it provides what I said, the indexing on top of the thing. Ah, this is because it uses the road key thing inside. So we have a library that transforms that, I believe. I believe it's due to this. 90% secure, not, not sure. Maybe the API, I don't know, you know? Ethercan, is that? Okay. So Ethercan is providing the transformation. Okay, so this thing. Uh, then uh, we can go to the graph and I will show the issue with the graph. Uh, so I have another script here. Uh, for the graph, I say, as I said, is based on. Ah, well, I may not have left. I'm not used to do this. Uh, so, if you are trying the example and one more time, or anyone has any complexity, have found any issue, if you are using following the script. Okay. So, the other th thing that we can do is call the subgraph. In this case, I have balancer subgraph. And uh, what I want to do is query all the events that one address had interacting with balancer contract. In this case, depositing um, withdrawing from balancer. So we have, again, an abstraction on top. But what this is doing, uh, let me search it for you. Ah, yeah. If I know how to do this, yes. Um, Anyone knows how to make it bigger from the, because control. Me doesn't see, huh? Okay, did some, okay. Magic. Computers, they don't work. Okay, um, so this is, so uh, what is this is doing is just a big abstraction, is calling this API, that is the subgraph API. Um, what it does is uh, building some, 
here. So uh, it builds uh, the is extract the um, different queries. So basically aggregating the add liquidity and remove liquidity events. Um, what is doing, under, doing underneath is building this kind of queries. So it has format a special parentheses for uh, the graph API. That is the limit is mapping to an integer, the offset is an integer, addresses is a list of IDs. This is something that you know, need to know if we're in this graph API. And then there is this list of values that are kind of uh, the one that maps to these types. So we do a, a API, a REST API call to the balancer SAC graph with the query string that is a big chunk of map, uh, JavaScript object. Um, the params that we provided. So what it does is mapping this address, this timestamp, timestamp zero, uh, zero to, to now, basically. So query everything on the chain. Um, what you can do is query. Uh, ah, it doesn't provide formal, right? Okay. So it takes a little, a little bit more of time because, ah, I need, do you have to provide the output somehow? Ah, is, ah, yeah, it's missing the room. Okay. 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 Building uh, this thing. Okay. No, it didn't show up for some reason. Okay. What? Ah, true. Okay. Okay, so this is big list of events that come from Balancer, but basically is the mapping of uh, an address to the event type that has the information about the transaction where it happened, the position inside the, um, of each event, the address interacting, the timestamp, the type of event, liquidity. So this is the kind of issue because this, is, this uses internal structure from Rodkey. Um, for every module that you buy, build on top of uh, the graph, you have to build something similar to ingest and digest the information that comes from there. And it also depends on the implementation that the developer did for the indexer. So every um, graph, so I can go here to the, yep, the graph. This is a playground that they have. So you have to send something like this. Um, when you query it, uh, you get the result in the format that the uh, developer intended to return it. And you have a specification here of what can be returned and what can not. You can customize it. So you need a structure to serialize and deserialize this information. Okay. Um, this is for the graph. And then um, I have a last example for this is TrueBlocks. So um, for TrueBlocks, I can recommend you uh, this tutorial, trueblocks.io slash tutorial. Um, this teach you how to set up everything, uh, how to get started with the environment, and then you have a getting a start guide where you can follow. So I will do it now. Uh, so what I do is chifra serve. And this, what it does is um, starting a server on localhost 8080 uh, that has the last, uh, because they have a special system when they publish the last snapshot and I don't have to, if I don't have a note. And this is running now in my computer. So I can do um, workshop. Um, here, uh, I will change this URL to mine. So HTTP slash localhost 8080. And um, what, this, what this will do, let me comment this is query true blocks directly to obtain certain information from the blockchain. So we start getting the timestamp for a block. 
and this will hopefully work. So it's just in, in starting a class that abstract the through blocks logic and getting the block from there. So Docker build. Yeah, this one. Ah, okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, one second. Two blocks dot fine. Okay. Uh, I got an error. Uh, with net. Mm. Okay, so maybe I can just do this. Uh, oh, I had this issue. Sorry. What? Ah, if you have it already running. Okay, so I will just send it back here. This URL, you can all access it at the moment. Probably it will break because it's running in the computer of my college. So let me see if it doesn't. Uh, yeah, one second. Okay, so no, there is one issue. Not again. Mm, maybe it will work. Okay. No. Is contacting your node? So what, what is that is because uh, the same way I think uh, my TrueBlox node, there is my colleague running his node, and what we did is link it through ngrok. It went. Yeah. Yeah? It, someone is hitting it at least. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know why it is not. Um, so I had this issue. Ah, it's a pity because. We had it working before, but I'm not sure. Maybe it's the can be the connection multiple. Okay. Okay. So things of the life, I guess. So I will just go through the code here. Like the, what this will do. Like you can you have the. Um, the code in GitHub, you can try it yourself. Um, it has the return the timestamp by, by giving it the block number. Then what this does is the same. If you have a transaction, it returns the same information as we showed before for it, the logs and the um, timestamp where it happened, the gas spent, and the, the user input. So you can do this. And this is more complex. That is the same thing that we were doing with Etherscan. So going asking for this address, give me all the transaction in this timestamp range. And the good thing is that this uses your node completely. It's not dependent on external services that you have to query. You are rate limited or anything. It's your own node, and you are unleashing the whole potential of it. Uh, yeah, it didn't work for some reason. Uh, I will just figure out later, maybe something on the configuration that went wrong. Okay, so this is it, I believe. Uh, so thank you for coming here. There is a, um, a link uh, here for all the links that we have, social network, uh, or Discord channel if, if you want to join, or GitHub repository. And also we are hiring if you want to work with us. Uh, you can play a little bit with the code that um, I have provided, and it uses the code, the, the same thing that we use in our project. So you can play around with it, and if you like it, maybe you can apply. Um, do you have anything to add? Uh, 
ਜਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਓਕੇ ਯਾ ਓਕੇ ਸੋ ਇਹ ਹਾਊ ਮਚ ਟਾਈਮ ਡੂ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ 5 ਮਿੰਟ ਓਕੇ so anyone has any question or anything that wants to be answered adra yep before okay can you can you speak ah. up to the microphone um, what what is this app <laughs> Okay so this is the application that uh, we are building this is I will put it here rocky.com uh, this one let me make it bigger so it's a portfolio tracker and accounting tool um basically what you can do is uh, add your different blockchain addresses uh, it has also the possibility to connect your uh, central exchanges centralized exchanges so kraken coinbase or everything connect it via api keys you add your addresses in the different i believe it's here in the screen no no uh, th there is a you can add also your addresses in ethereum optimist arbitrum or uh, deltus and you get a view of everything in one place so then you can do this thing in the slides that is uh, history event basically you have the complete view of all your actions on the blockchain and it's using the data that we get from the nodes so process it aggregate it and build something beautiful to read like this so uh, and on top of that what you can do is accounting so since you know what is in and what is out of your account you can do accounting um get your profits and loss for this quarter whatsoever um so yeah it has different features and the main potential is the thing connecting defi addresses and exchanges okay. um we are focused also in since um, the main point of our work is uh, privacy so we are a local app um everything runs in your computer this is why having uh, indexing tools that are powerful is important for us and um, we are privacy focused also so as you see um, we try to query the notes uh, if you don't have we try to be as preserving the privacy as much as possible um you get this much powerful tool that we will okay anything else yep uh, <laughs> Yeah um how do you start chifra? Ah okay so for starting chifra uh, I pointed this thing is trueblocks.io/tutorial um yep and here you have the the requirement that you have for the installing it basically is go ninja make um then you clone the repo uh, just build it build it um you add it to the path and then you have the chifra command okay. uh, notice that uh, if you use the tutorial i think it's configured to go to sepolia right not to mainnet so you might want to do the normal installation guide yeah so it has the um, if you do there i don't recall the command but it's chifra did conf and then you have the option because it will ask for you to add your rpc node because it uses your node to query the information so you can add the your rpc node and then you can select the network and everything and there they have this tutorial where you can also follow and probably you can work with the script because i had it working just before <laughs> but something went wrong okay uh, something else okay so if someone has any question you can contact me on twitter um the rocky team also uh, let me right it again yeah so here are all of the links if you have any question or want to get around the code or want help running it uh, you can just contact us and we will help you okay so thank you very much for your